evening. I'm Spot on Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and welcome to the Spot on Weather video, the meteorology history series. And tonight I'm going to take a look at a very important person in the meteorological community, major, major contributions, Mr. Ted Fujita, also known as Mr. Tornado. Here is an image of Ted Fujita um, looking at one of the research laboratories, uh, watching the simulation of a tornadic um, vortice in a lab. And uh, this man was quite remarkable indeed to the weather community. So let's take a look at Mr. Tornado tonight. So for timeline and specific work, we'll go ahead and kick things off there. Um, Mr. Fujita was born in Sone Village, Fukuoka Prefecture, Japan. Uh, he was born in 1920, and he lived out into the year 1998. In 1945, Japanese authorities, now this is where it all started for Ted Fujita. In that year 1945, Japanese authorities asked Fujita to survey the wreckage from an atomic bomb to understand what happened, to study those damage patterns. And that is really what got him interested in deciphering these damage patterns and the destructions. Mr. Fujita earned his doctorate from Tokyo University in 1950. Uh, he began his career as an associate professor at the Kyushu Institute of Technology. And then using the shapes and locations of burn marks from bombs, Fujita did extensive damage assessment and was able to determine precisely where the bomb had come from and how far up in the sky it had actually detonated. So this was some remarkable work that the Japanese government asked him to explore in the wake of World War II, 1945, towards the end there of World War II. He was fascinated by storms as a teenager. In fact, he spent his time in post-war Japan applying his insight to storm formation. And after reading a paper by Fujita, another very famous gentleman within the meteorological community by the name of Horace Byers, invited him to join the University of Chicago in 1953. Um, he began teaching at that university where he served as a professor all the way up until his death in 1998. So quite a tenure there uh, at the University of Chicago. Fujita worked with buyers generally in the United States Weather Bureau's thunderstorm project, which was ongoing, in which the government wanted to use these new advances in satellite photography and aircraft to improve weather forecasting. And Fujita then began analyzing these single thunderstorms initially and saw them as these individual systems that he actually termed, coined the phrase, mesoscale systems. In 1957, Fujita analyzed a tornado that actually struck the town of Fargo in North Dakota, in which he reconstructed the evidence from photos taken by local residents along with recorded instrument measurements from the ground. So he was basically this damage pattern detective and really studied this Fargo, North Dakota tornado. He pieced together all these photos um, and he was just really good as far as observation as being a, a very astute observer of these damage patterns. In a ground pa uh, groundbreaking paper Fujita developed the use of terms such as wall cloud, which we commonly hear today in severe weather lingo. Uh, that wall cloud being the low wedge-shaped storm cloud from which a tornado funnel descends. And while studying damage patterns over cornfields, Fujita and additional storms, he realized that a tornado may not be singular in nature. Instead, it could contain multiple suction vortices that rotate around the main a vortex, the main tornado, and this helps to explain why one house, for example, may be completely destroyed while the other house next to it is untouched. So think about this big, huge tornado vortex, this big tornado in the middle, and these small little uh, funnel clouds that rotate, these suction vortices rotating around the major uh, tornado in the middle of the storm. Um, and again, that helped to explain why one house left untouched, the other house completely destroyed. Now, a suction vortex is generally a small but very intense 
uh, circulation pattern within a tornadic circulation. Uh, you can have several of these vortices that are present in multiple vortex tornado um, and are responsible for the extreme damage associated with violent tornadoes, the EF4s and EF5s. All right, one of the biggest contributions that Ted Fujita made to the meteorological community is right here on the left. He developed what was known as the Fujita scale for damaging winds. And he classified this scale, the rating from F0, in which we saw 40 to 72 mile per hour winds and light damage, all the way up to an F5 tornado with winds between 261 to 318 miles per hour producing just incredible damage where pretty much everything is flattened. If you look at the general structure um, of, let me go ahead and get my, pen, my marker out here, my laser pointer. If you look at the general patterns here, uh, the damage patterns from the various types of tornadoes on the Fujita scale, uh, this is generally uh, upper left is the F1 tornado. You notice there is some damage to some of these structures, but they're not completely leveled or flattened. There's just a lot of damage caused by the winds, caused by the intense low pressure as the tornado vortex passes over these areas. The F2 in the bottom left, now we have a little bit more extensive damage. You notice this was quite a, a large structure. This might have been like a hotel, it looks like, in which the whole entire roof was blown off the top of it. The F3 tornado, uh, now we're getting into even more damage caused by the tornado itself. See a lot more uh, debris. F4 tornadoes, uh, very few structures left standing, and then an F5 tornado on the Fujita scale. That's an absolute worst, uh, worst case scenario for damage patterns. And F5, just, in, just this incredible damage. So Fujita studied these damage patterns after tornadoes, and he decided, you know, he came up and invented and just, just basically came up with this scale, this Fujita scale for damaging winds and the damaging patterns associated with those winds. Here is an example from Fujita in 1971, his research, showing those um, suction vortices that I was talking about in the previous slide. So we have one major tornado at the center of this um, particular system, and then we have these other suction vortices that rotate around. They kind of move around in a counterclockwise manner around the main storm center, the main tornado center, and these can be uh, responsible for producing some of the most extreme damage to structures these suction vortices. Specific work from Mr. Fujita in 1975, uh, one of the biggest issues that was occurring were these airlines were having these terrible crashes either upon takeoff, ascending upon takeoff, or descending, coming into land. Uh, one of the prime examples of this was Eastern Airlines Flight 66, which crashed at the JFK airport, killing 122 people on board. And after this particular uh, aviation incident, Fujita was called in to investigate it. Uh, what he did then is he reviewed radar images, uh, he took a look at flight records, he interviewed pilots of planes which safely landed just before that particular crash in 1975. What he discovered out of this was a term called a microburst which happens to be just a sudden gust of wind that comes out of the base of a thunderstorm, helping the aviation community to conduct landings and takeoffs much more safely. So the discovery of this term microburst, uh, this collapsing thunderstorm with these strong downburst of winds, um, that really, really um, helped the aviation community. In fact, the aviation community eventually invested in uh, what's known as a low-level wind shear alert system to help detect the varying degrees of wind directions and speeds, the gustiness of the winds um, around thunderstorms near major airports. So again, Ted Fujita is most famous, of course, for creating the Fujita scale, assessing tornadic intensity based on wind speeds and the amount of damage he studied, the damage it caused. Here's an example, uh, a picture of Mr. Fujita in the upper left. He's got his camera handy there. He's got all these images from the camera that he took pictures of, of the damage patterns of various tornadoes, um, various um, destructive paths that they took. Uh, here's another example of a path he took there in the lower left. And then generally here on the, the bottom left, I show an example of a microburst. 
Uh, generally, what you have happening is this colder air that tends to descend out of the base or the lowest level of the thunderstorm cloud. And then once it hits the ground, uh, it can be very damaging, very high, very high wind gusts associated with these microbursts. That air tends to spread out horizontally along the surface. Uh, as you, and you can see why this would be very dangerous to aviation, right? Uh, if a plane is coming to land and descend in altitude to come land on a runway beneath this, um, this could basically cause that plane to crash right into the ground really easily. Or if a plane were to be on takeoff, it's not going to get much lift with this kind of microburst situation where you get these strong downbursts of winds coming out of the thunderstorm. Uh, additionally, these were um, in the upper right photographs and descriptions of the Fujita tornado scale from F0 to F5 taken by um, Mr. Fujita. Um, again, just groundbreaking research that he, he conducted while um, he studied these storms. Now, what happened to the general Fujita scale, the F0 to F5? Um, the Fujita scale was updated. We still keep Fujita in the name. It's now called the Enhanced Fujita scale. And you'll notice the differing winds from EF0 would be the weakest tornado all the way up to EF5 being the strongest tornado. Um, this scale was devised by a team of meteorologists and engineers, including two of Fujita's former students, uh, Dr. Greg Forbes. He worked at the Weather Channel for a while doing the severe weather updates. And also Roger Wakimoto. This EF scale was adopted on February 1st, 2007, and it was devised according to American construction practices. And other nations use adapted versions of this. Um, just generally here in the bottom right, showing you the U.S. tornadoes, uh, the paths of these tornadoes from 1930 to 1974. Um, so you can see a lot of these tornadoes occur in the eastern United States. Recognition and awards for Ted Fujita he received the Order of the Sacred Treasure, the Gold and Silver Star from the Government of Japan in 1991, the Fujiwara Award from Meteorological Society of Japan in 1990, the Vermeil Gold Medal from the French National Academy of Air and Space in 1989, the Applied Meteorology Award from the American Meteorological Society in 1988, and NASA's Public Service Medal in 1979. So quite an amazing career for Ted Fujita. These are the references used, the University of Chicago, How One Scientist Reshaped What We Know About Tornadoes by Louise Lerner, that was done in 2020, and then Southwest Collection WordPress, a lot of good photos from Fujita uh, were included in tonight's Meteorology History Series on Mr. Tornado, Ted Fujita, uh, what a remarkable man, and what an amazing amount of contribution he made uh, when it came to severe thunderstorms as well as tornadoes. All right, uh, speaking of tornadoes, uh, that's next on the agenda for the training here on the Spot on Weather YouTube channel. Um, hopefully I'll get to that here shortly. I've got a lot of great information involving tornadoes from formations to uh, general climatology of where tornadoes occur. So this um, meteorology history series ties well, ties in very well, very nicely with the next training that we'll be providing here at Spot on Weather. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. We certainly hope you enjoy the videos and uh, recognizing those meteorological pioneers of the past. So until next time, take care, everybody, and God bless.